Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here, welcome to the channel, and welcome back to the fall campaign for Arkham Horror, the card game. We picked up four experience from Return to a Phantom of Truth last week, and cleared our lady's trauma, so now we're going to move into the sixth scenario, Return to the Pallid Mask. First up, let's set the scene. Scenario 5, The Phantom of Truth. Whoop, hang on, campaign. wrong scenario. There we go. Scenario 6, The Pallid Mask. Check campaign log if you did not escape the gaze of the Phantom, or if you were unable to find Nigel. Read intro 1. If you found Nigel's abode, or if you found Nigel Ingram, skip to intro 2. Checking the campaign log, we found Nigel's home, so intro 2 is what we need. Intro 2. The contents of Nigel Ingram's home answer none of your questions about the King in Yellow, but do hint at where you should head next. The old, tattered map you found on his coffee table depicts a section of the infamous catacombs of Paris. One particular room on the map has been circled with pen, and next to it is written, The key to opening the path lies here. You swallow your fear and head immediately for the entrance of the catacombs underneath Rue de la Tombe Isore. Record in your campaign log that you entered the catacombs on your own. Check campaign log. If Ishimaru Haruko is listed under VIPs interviewed, proceed to Haruko's information. Otherwise, skip to setup. Checking the VIPs interviewed, Ishimaru Haruko is listed among the VIPs we interviewed, so we get her information. Haruko's information. Just past the archway closest to you, you see a familiar symbol etched into the skull of a sheep. Rows of concentric semicircles lined with exotic runes. Two wavy lines descend from the design, leading into the skull's lower jawbone. You recognize it as the pattern Haruko had shown you. Wondering why it would appear here, you examine the skull in greater detail. As soon as you touch the underside of the skull's jawbone, its mouth suddenly opens. Bones collapse to the ground as the wall slides to reveal a new path. Remember that you opened a secret passageway. Proceed to set up. That will come into play once we move over to the map, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Next up, let's go ahead and remind everyone of what the tarot reading was. On the good side, we once again left strength 8, so we'll be able to play an asset from our hand at minus 2 cost when the game begins. On the bad side, we flip the High Priestess 2. During the first lore test each investigator performs each round, they get minus one lore. Hopefully that won't be too big of a problem. It'll probably affect Mandy more than Jacqueline, since Mandy uses her lore, whereas Jacqueline tends to use her will. But let's go ahead and take a look at opening hands. Jacqueline will once again be our first investigator. So as far as cards we can't play, we have two copies to start of Read the Signs. Two costs to play, will and lore on commit. Investigate plus will for the investigation, and you may ignore any effect or keyword on your location which would trigger during this investigation. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at this location. I'll go through flavor text if I play it. Then as far as assets, we've got some good choices. First up is Twilla Catherine Price, Lost in a Dream. Three costs to play, lore and agility on commit. Reaction, after you spend one or more charges from a spell asset, exhaust Twilla, to place one charge on that asset. Next up we have, once it decides it wants to focus, there we are, bring that in just a touch, and we've got Arbiter of Fates. Three costs to play, Will, Agility, Wild Card on Commit. Jacqueline Fine Deck only. Fast Action, when you use Reaction, when you use Jacqueline's special ability, Exhaust Arbiter of Fates. This use of her ability doesn't count toward its limit. And finally, the Black Book signed in blood. This is from Return to Circle Undone that we did last year. Three costs to play, Will, Lore, Wildcard, and Commit. 
You get plus one will and plus one lore. Reaction, when you play a card, exhaust the black book and take X horror. Reduce that card's cost by X. Got some good choices there for Jacqueline. Similarly, Mandy does as well. Actually, she can play everything except for burning the midnight oil. Zero cost to play. Lore agility on commit. Investigate and when the action begins, gain two resources. As for what we can play, however, with the, this is from strength eight I'm talking. We have two copies of Eon Chart level four. Two cost to play, lore, agility, wild card on commit. Uses three secrets. Fast action, during your turn, exhaust Eon Chart and spend a secret to choose and take two of the following actions in any order. Move, evade, or investigate, and they take up the accessory slot. Then we have a research librarian. Two cost to play, agility on commit. Reaction after it enters play, search your deck for a tome asset and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. One and one on soak. Then for the card we're probably actually going to play. Dr. Milan Christopher, professor of entomology. Four cost to play, lore on commit. You get plus one lore, and if you successfully investigate, gain one resource. One and two on soak. Next up, let's take a look at the starting act and agenda deck. So first we have the agenda. Which is agenda 1A, Empire of the Dead. The dank, chill air of the catacombs penetrates your clothes and causes you sh to shiver. Everywhere you look, the remains of the dead greet you. A grim reminder of your own mortality. Each location is connected to each location adjacent to it. And it'll be orthogonal adjacency, but we'll get into that later. As far as the act is concerned... Through the catacombs, at the end of the long tunnel next to you, the stranger steps through the darkness, his pale mask glinting in the candlelight. Wait, you call out. He glances your way before vanishing into the shadows. Once more, you are forced to track him down to find answers. Objective, find the man in the pallid mask. He is somewhere in the catacombs. Don't advance until you're instructed. So it's not a clue threshold that we need to advance this time. But with that, I think last up, the ladies will move over to the map. So let's join them there. I'm using this 10 resource marker to mark the start location, but, and I'm going to leave it there, but we're going to go through the unrevealed side of the catacombs first. As an additional cost for you to enter catacombs, investigators at your location must spend two clues as a group. Uh, that's one per investigator. Skulls and bones decorate the walls of this wide hallway in a macabre fashion. This flips into the gate to hell. One, throughout of one, four clues. Forced, when the gate to hell is revealed, put the top two catacombs, put te, catacombs in the catacombs deck into play above and below the gates of hell. Arete, se isi lempiri de la morte. That's probably, that's probably my horrendous Spanish. So, we'll get the four clues for that. Then we'll put the top two catacombs into play, above and below. This scenario is probably going to get big in a hurry. And now here's where Ishimaru's information comes into play. Because we opened a secret passageway, we get to choose one of these and reveal it. So I think we're going to reveal down. That camera is probably going to end up going... Let me see if I'm... Okay, I'm as zoomed out as I can go. So I'll back the camera up just a touch, and then I'll reveal this catacombs because we opened a secret passageway. So here we find research site, shroud of six, no clues. Reaction, after you successfully investigate the research site, reveal any catacombs location, group limit once per game. Forced, when research site is revealed, put the topmost catacombs into play above or above, below, or to the right of any location. So I'm going to put... I'm going to put a catacombs... 
to the right of that one. And I'm, like I said, I'm probably going to want... I may actually want the Eldritch standees for this one pretty soon. I forgot how big and sprawling this is going to get. But I think we're all set, so I'm going to declare start of... I'm going to declare start of game, which means two things. One, we can no longer speak the name of the unspeakable. And two, each of our ladies will get to play an asset from their hand at minus two cost per strength eight. So I think for Jacqueline, she's going to start by paying one resource for... I think she's going to play the black book, actually, to get plus one will and plus one lore. As for the flavor text... He must sign in his own blood the Book of Azathoth and take a new secret name. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dreams in the Witch House. So we'll play that out in one of her hand slots. As for Mandy, no bonus points for guessing here. She's going to pay two resources to play out Dr. Milan Christopher. While I truly pray that this nightmare is but just a singular abomination, I must admit that I am exhilarated by the possibility that this is but one specimen of a new genus. That goes into one of her ally slots. That'll bring us into our first investigation phase, and I think Jacqueline will stay right here at the map. Fraction one, we're going to spend two resources to play out or read the signs. So that'll let her investigate, adding her will to the skill value for this investigation. A grisly future is laid before you. Do you turn away, or do you embrace it? Since this is a lore test, Jacqueline's actually getting minus one lore, which will bring her down to a total of three, because remember, we played the black book, which brought her up to four. This brings it back down to three. Plus six is a nine. So she's up eight, trying to discover two clues. A minus two gets her two clues, so that will work. Come on, there we go. Let's see, action two. We're going to bring Jacqueline down to... Yeah, we'll bring her down to the research site. And then action three, she'll take a resource. Mostly so she's set up for next turn. And that will do it for Jacqueline. Mandy will start off by burning a little midnight oil for action. Actually, before she does that, she's going to exhaust ancestral knowledge to get a skill from under that. So Mandy will draw. Momentum. If you're successful, wildcard and commit. If the skill test is successful, reduce the difficulty of the next skill test you perform this phase by X where X is the amount the skill test succeeded by to a maximum of three. Now for action one, she's going to invest, she's going to burn a little midnight oil to get the two resources back she paid to play Milan from strength, from strength eight, which means she's at a five to one, she's up four, only trying to discover one clue. Tentacle touched, naturally. Action two, she'll run it back. This time she's up five now, because she's now she's got her full lore. Skull. Skull is minus X, where X is the number of locations away from the starting location you are, max 5. That's why we need this marker, or something to indicate the starting location. But since we're at the starting location, that's a 0, so Mandy will get a clue and a resource from Milan. Action 3, she'll run the investigate back.
Minus two gets her the other clue and another resource from Milan. That'll do it for Mandy. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, first round of the game, so no enemies in play. With that, I'll go ahead and reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline will gain one resource and go to four. Mandy will gain one and go to eight. Jacqueline will draw. Word of command. This is perfect. Name a two cost to play. Name a spell card. Search your deck for one copy of the named card and draw it. Shuffle your deck. Mandy will draw. A cult lexicon level three. Two cost to play. Two lore on commit. Limit one per deck. Reaction, when you play a copy of Blood Rite, either change each two to a three, or shuffle it into your deck instead of discarding it. Forced, after a cult lexicon enters play, search your bonded cards for three copies of Blood Rite. Add one to your hand and the other two into your deck. Mythos phase, we put our first Doom up on the agenda. Jacqueline draws. Eyes in the Walls, Revelation, Test Will 3. For each point you fail by... Take one horror. When assigning horror from this effect, it must be divided as evenly as possible among eligible cards. Jacqueline right now is up three because of the black book. So we're just going to test there. We're not going to put her ability behind it. A well-loved minus one means Jacqueline's all clear of that. Mandy draws. Obscuring fog. Revelation, attach to your location, limit one per location. Attached to location gets plus two shroud. Forced, after attached to location is successfully investigated, discard obscuring fog. Which does literal nothing to us because it goes on the gate of hell, gates on the gate to hell, and we just cleared all of the clues off the location. Investigation phase next, and Jacqueline's turn will take us right back over to the map. In an open player window, Mandy will exhaust ancestral knowledge to get another skill from under it she will find. Deduction level two, two lore to commit, two lore on commit. If you're successful while investigating a location, discover one additional clue at the location, two additional clues if you succeed by two or more. For Jacqueline's action one, she'll spend her two clues to move over to this catacombs location. And we'll see what we find here. We find... Labyrinth of Bones, Shroud of, four, shroud of Two, Four Clues. Forced, when Labyrinth of Bones is revealed, put the top three catacombs... From the, in the Catacombs deck above, below, and to the right of Labyrinth of Bones. A pillar of bones dominates the center of this circular chamber. Several dark passages lead in multiple directions. All right, we'll get the four clues for that. Oop. And we need three labyrinths. Above, below and to the right, and yes, by the time we get to the next Mythos phase, I will be swapping out for the Eldritch standees. As for Action 2, Jacqueline will spend two resources to read the signs once more. So she's at... So right, her lore... Okay, so her lore comes down to 3. 9 to 2, she's up 7, and I'm going to put her ability behind this. One, two, three. Right. Token one is a minus one. Token two, the tentacle, which we'll probably have to cancel. 
and cultist. What is the cultist? Cultist is minus two. If this token is revealed during an attack and the skill test is successful, the attack deals one less damage. So we do have to cancel the tentacle for revealing the cultist during an investigation. So Jacqueline still gets two clues. Then for action three, she's going to pay two resources for a word of command. And I'm going to name... What am I going to name? I think we're going to go get... Uh, do I want... The question is, do I want shriveling or do I want clairvoyance? And that is a tough decision, and I think I want... I know there are enemies in the deck because I shuffled it, but we haven't seen any yet, so I think right now... Right now I think I want clairvoyance. Which is right there. We'll take a quick look at clairvoyance before we move it to Jacqueline's hand. Clairvoyance level 5. Four cost to play, lore, two lore and a will on commit. Uses three charges. As an action, we can spend a charge to investigate using will instead of lore. Get plus three will for the investigation. If we succeed, discover two additional clues of the location. But if we pull a good symbol, we have to take two horror. That's in Jacqueline's hand right now, and that's it for Jacqueline's turn. Mandy's turn. She's going to spend her first action and her two clues to move to this catacombs location that was just revealed. That was just put into place, so she will find. Candlelit tunnels. As shroud of three, four clues. As an action, test lore three to read an ancient sign. If you succeed, look at the revealed side of any catacombs location in play. Group limit once per game. Forced, when Candlelit Tunnels is revealed, put the top two catacombs in the catacombs deck into play to the left and right of Candlelit Tunnels. Well, we can only put one to the right. Which is unfortunate, but I'll go get the four clues for that. That was action one. Action two, we're going to investigate... And I'm going to commit deduction. I know I knew I'd seen this symbol before. I must warn the others before it's too late. So that brings Mandy to five, seven to three. She's up four. If she succeeds by if she succeeds, she gets two clues. If she succeeds by two or more, she gets three clues. And we are up. What did we establish? Five, six, seven. We're up four. A zero gets her three clues. So nicely done, Mandy. And then for action three, she'll run the invest... She also gets a resource from Milan, which brings her up to nine. Then for action three, I think we're going to pay two resources, going down to eight, to play one of her Eon charts out. So I'll get the charges for that. The exhaustion marker is going to mark her third charge because she's going to immediately use one to use its to use the Eon Chart's ability. So she's going to investigate up three once again. Minus one gives her another clue and a resource back from Milan. That brings her up to, back up to nine. 
Then she's going to... Then she's going to move down to join Jacqueline in the Labyrinth of Bones. We can probably get those two clues easily enough. That will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, no enemies in place, so we're going to flip these two over. Like I said, these two will be swapped out for their Eldritch Minis by the time we come back over to the map. But we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. I brought both their, their mini cards over here. I'll continue to use those as flipping signals indicating who's gone or not. I'm closing the closet door, by the way. All right, coming back to the upkeep phase, Jacqueline gains one resource. Mandy gains one and goes to ten. Jacqueline draws. Ward, ward of Protection level two. One cost to play, wild card on commit. Fast, play when an investigator at any location draws a non-weakness treachery card. Cancel that card's revelation effect, then take one horror. Mandy draws. Dream Diary, Dreams of an Explorer. Two cost to play, lore, will and agility on commit. You can only include yada yada yada. While you're at a location with at least four shroud, your essence of the dream gains two wild cards, and as a reaction when your turn begins, search your bonded cards for essence of the dream and add it to your hand, taking up a hand slot. Mythos phase, we put our second doom on the agenda. Jacqueline draws. The shadow behind you. Revelation. Put the shadow behind you into play in your threat area. Limit one per investigator. As an action, you look behind you. Forced, at the end of your turn, if you didn't perform the above ability, you must either discard all of your resources or discard all cards in your hand. Then, discard the shadow behind you. Well, we can probably deal with that. I'm just going to take a quick look at Jacqueline's hand. Uh, yeah. I think we can work with that. Then Mandy will draw. Spirit's Torment. Attached to your location. Forced. After you leave attached location, you must either take one horror or lose one action. As an action, place one of your clues on attached location. Discard Spirit's Torment. That's not that bad either in the grand scheme of things. That attaches to Labyrinth of Bones. That'll do it for the Mythos phase. Before we leave that, Mandy will exhaust Ancestral Knowledge to get another skill off of it. She will draw. Eureka. Lore, Will, Agility, and Commit. If the skill test is, is successful, the investigator performing this test searches the top three cards of their deck for a card, draws it, and shuffles their deck. Okay, cool. Um, I think that will bring us into the investigation phase, and let's move... Hmm, what do we want to do here? Let's move... Mandy over to the map. It is a bit of a weird angle, but I do have the Eldritch standees on the board for the investigators. Mandy is going to start her turn by exhausting Eon Chart to start with investigating. So she's at, right now, a 5 to a 2. She's up 3, and that's where she's going to test. A minus two gets her a clue, and that'll be another resource from Milan, which will bring her up to 11. I'm going to grab another one of those markers, but this time I'm going I'm to grab one of these bounty markers that I'm using to mark the starting location, but it's going to flip into an envelope of money as a 10 resource marker. And then Mandy's going to investigate again. This time she's up four, because that only applies to the first lore test.
Minus two gets her the other clue. And another resource to bring her up to 12. Action one, she's going to play out the Dream Diary. Come on. Wish we could give Jacqueline some of these resources. Dream Diary is there. Action two, we're going to go, we're going to pay another two resources. Which will bring Mandy down to eight. To play out her occult lexicon. So now we've got, now we've got some way to deal with enemies. And we'll take a quick look at occult lexicon. We're not going to look at Essence of the Dream until we actually get that into play for Mandy, but Blood Rite is a zero cost to play. Will, lore, combat, and commit. Of course, bonded to occult lexicon. Draw two cards, discard up to two cards from your hand. For each card you discard this way, you may either gain a resource or spend a resource to deal one damage to an enemy at your location. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Okay, so we can give that a... We'll give the deck a shuffle. So that's all done, and then Mandy will spend two clues and take a horror in the Labyrinth of Bones due to Spirit's Torment to move down to this catacombs location. So here we'll reveal another Labyrinth of Bones. This one's above, below, and to the right. So we'll get four clues for that. And then we can only do below and to the right, and I'm going to be moving this over when we next move over to the, when we next come over, come back to the map. So that will do it for Mandy. For Jacqueline, I want to try to get rid of the shadow behind you for next, before next turn. So, I think here we're going to take, I think for action one, we're going to play, we're going to take one resource and we're going to exhaust the black book to take three horror to play out clairvoyance. So we saw this earlier. We'll get the three charges for that. Then action two, we're going to move down to the Labyrinth of Bones. And action three, we're going to take a resource. So at the end of our turn, the way Shadow Behind You works is since we didn't trigger the action ability, we either discard all of my resources or discard all cards in my hand. I'm going to discard the one resource that I took because that's technically all of my resources. And then the shadow behind you is gone. So that'll do it for Jacqueline. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, we still have no enemies in play and our investigators are together. So we'll flip everything over and then I'll, we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline will gain one resource and go to one. Mandy will gain one and go to nine. Jacqueline will draw. Spectral Razor. Two cost to play, will and combat on commit. Fight plus will for the attack. Immediately before this attack, you may engage the attacked enemy. This attack deals plus one damage, plus two instead if the enemy is non-elite. Mandy draws. Lost Soul. Uh-oh. Revelation, check the campaign log. If you have more or equal doubt than conviction, which we don't, we have more conviction than doubt, so we test Will X, where X is your lore. Yikes. If you fail, take two damage. And right now, Mandy is down three. So here's a question. Can we get Jack, can we get up to a point where testing that's going to be worthwhile? Um... 
Do we get her to minus one and then put Jacqueline's ability behind it? I think we just... As much as I don't like it, take, being down three pretty much means we're getting domed and I have to overcommit just to have a chance. So I think we're just going to draw and just, just, take, just get domed to two down, basically. I think that's the best plan here. Minus two, yeah. We never had much of a chance of passing that test anyway, so I'm not too, I'm not too busted up about that. Mythos phase, after I finished doing a little bit of maintenance over on Mandy's play area. Mythos phase, we put our third doom on the agenda. Jacqueline draws. Grasping hands. Revelation test agility three. For each point you fail by, take one damage. Decaying hands rise up from below and grasp and claw at your ankles. Jacqueline right now is down one. Um, she's going to commit... Actually, no. Here's how we're going to do this. Mandy is going to commit Eureka to get Jacqueline to even. I was planning on using this for Jacqueline anyway. And then Jacqueline's going to put her special ability behind this. So right now, Ma Jacqueline's even, and we've got her special ability behind her. One, two, three. Token one for Jacqueline. Is a minus two. That's not good. Token two. A skull, which is, a skull right now is minus three because we're three locations away. And a zero. So we'll cancel the skull and the minus two. So Jacqueline passes, which means she's clear of that. And now Jacqueline gets to search the top three cards of her deck. But because we're with Mandy and Jacqueline needs resources desperately, I'm going to send her three deeper to see if I can find resources. So we'll... Flip over that we've used that for Jacqueline. So one, two, three, four, five, six. First card up for Jacqueline is an enchanted bow, which I probably don't want here. I mean, we do need, well, I would say we need attack, but that would be slot pressure to get rid of the black book. Card two, arcane initiate. That could be helpful for finding spells, so I'll consider that. Card three, the Chthonian Stone, Stygian Waymark. This could seal a token, but I probably don't want that either. Card four, Storm of Spirits, which could also come in very handy. Um, I might be able to find that later, but I'll put that on the maybe pile. Card five, Clasp of Black Onyx. That's a hard no, and it's a gift unlooked for. Card six. Drawn to the Flame. Ooh, this is interesting as well. Draw the top card of the encounter deck, then discover two clues at your location. The thing is, well, I would say we've got a guaranteed three clues, but I just had to use Jacqueline's ability to clear Grasping Hands. So I know I don't want the Enchanted Bow, the Chthonian Stone, or the Clasp of Black Onyx. And I think right now I don't want Storm of Spirits either. So... I think we take the Arcane Initiate. As tempting as Drawn to the Flame is, I think Arcane Initiate's what we take here. If I can get some resources, I can probably get I can probably start getting Twilla going. I can probably get Twilla on the board next turn. We'll take a look at the Arcane Initiate when I go to play her on Jacqueline's turn, most likely. Give this one more shuffle. And a cut. And we're all good there, after quite a, an involved card there. Mandy draws. Ghoul Minion, twos across the board. It was a colossal and nameless blasphemy with glaring red eyes and it held in bony claws a thing that it had been a man. 
gnawing at the head of, as a child nibbles at a stick of candy, H.P. Lovecraft, Pickman's model, one and one on attack. Delightful. Okay, so that's it for the mythos phase. Before we leave that, Mandy will exhaust ancestral knowledge to get a skill out from under it, if I can ever get my finger under the card, so Mandy will draw. Another deduction. I like that they've ended up under the under ancestral knowledge this game, but we're into the investigation phase, and let's start Mandy's turn at her play area. Action one, we're going to start off with her copy of Bloodright, and we're going to use it as a two. So Mandy will draw two cards. First up, she will find another Eureka, which we just used earlier to try to get Jacqueline deeper into her deck, and Unspeakable Oath Curiosity. Oh, delightful. Campaign mode, peril hidden. Revelation, secretly add this card to your hand. Forced. When the game ends or you're eliminated, if this card is in your hand, you earn two fewer experience. As a reaction, after you successfully investigate a location with no clues on it, discard this card from your hand. Unfortunately, we can't voluntarily discard that. I can, however, discard Momentum and Research Librarian, now that I've got the tomes I want. And I'll spend two resources to take out the Ghoul Minion. Which means that will shuffle back into the deck. And I've, oh, I almost forgot, at the end of her turn, or at the start of her turn, I should say, Mandy gets Essence of the Dream. We're probably not using it this turn anyway, but, well, maybe, I don't know. We'll give that a bit of thought, but we'll take a quick look at Essence of the Dream. Since we're not at a location with four Shroud, it doesn't get two extra wild cards. It's already got two on commit, and when it would be shut, would enter your discard pile or be shuffled into your deck. Instead, set it aside out of play with your bonded cards. So that's in Mandy's hand now. Then she will actually exhaust her last charge from Eon Chart to investigate. So, well, for her, there's three actions. So she'll for two actions from that. So she'll start off with an, investiga an investigation. Say it in English, Phoenix. And she'll commit deduction for another two lore, which will put her at five, six, seven to two. She's up five. Up five, trying to discover three clues. And I am factoring in the minus one lore from the first lore test from the High Priestess 2. That's an Elder Sign, which we'll take a look at Mandy's Elder Sign. Plus zero, and she gets to search the top three cards of her deck for a card, and either draw it or commit it to this test if able, shuffling. So let's see what we find from the top three. First up, Mandy finds... Hiking Boots, level one. That's an agility, so we couldn't commit that. Card two. In the no. This might be useful later. And... Survey the area. Um... I think I want... I think I want in the no, but I'm not going to commit it. Remember, I either have the I either have the option to draw it or commit it. So I'm going to choose to draw it in this case. We'll shuffle these nice and deep. Hopefully. And then Mandy gets three clues off of that. She's stockpiling the clues. Then she'll investigate again. 
This time she's at her full strength, so she's up six. Skull is a minus three, but that's enough to get her the last get her the last clue off the location. Then for action two, she's going to spend two resources going down to five, replacing her first Eon chart with a second due to slot pressure. And we'll get another charge for that, which will be two, and we'll put an exhaustion charge on it because Mandy's going to be investigating again. Actually, she should have two more resources from... She should have, I think three more resources. Right, no, only two, because she investigated twice. But she's going to spend her, her, she's going to spend two more clues. Actually, we'll spend two clues and we'll follow those clues over to the map. We'll move over to this catacombs to the right and Mandy will reveal. Shivering Pools, Shroud of Five, what two clues. After you end your turn at Shivering Pools, you must either take one direct horror or one direct damage or lose five resources. Forced, when it's revealed, put the topmost catacombs in the catacombs deck into play below or to the right of Shivering Pools. Victory one. So we'll put two clues there and we'll put one to the right. Three, four, five, six, seven. We're getting into the bottom five, and that's... Well, I'm metagaming a little bit on that. As for her second move, as for her second action from that, she is going to... investigate there. She's not going to be... She's. I'm hoping she's not going to... Well, I think we can move again, actually. We'll spend another two clues to move over to this right catacombs that we just put into play. I can probably leave those clues for Jacqueline to pick up. We'll find... Narrow Shaft, Shroud of Two, Two Clues. Forced, when you would move from Narrow Shaft to an unrevealed location, test Agility 3. If you fail, take one damage and cancel the effects of the move. Forced, when Narrow Shaft is revealed, put the topmost catacombs in the catacombs deck into play above or to the right of Narrow Shaft. We'll put that one up here, then we'll get the two clues for that. And action three, we're going to spend... Um, actually, we're just going to investigate, and I'm going to commit Essence of the Dream. It's probably over, it's way overkill, but eight to two, we're up six. Minus two gets her a clue. That gets her a clue and a resource, which brings her back up to eight. And then that will do it for Mandy. Jacqueline will move one to the Shivering Pools for action one. Action two, she'll spend a charge off Clairvoyance to investigate using Will. She's at six, plus three is nine. She's up four, trying to discover both clues, but I don't want to see a good symbol here. Minus two gets her both clues. And then for action three, we'll have her join Mandy over the narrow shaft. That will do it for Jacqueline. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, still no enemies in play. So I'll go ahead and reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to two. Mandy gains one and goes to nine. Jacqueline draws. 
Four of Cups, Chalice of the Heart. Three costs to play, no commit. Plus one will, and when the game begins, if Four of Cups is in your opening hand, put it into play. Mandy draws. I've got a plan. Three costs to play, lore, combat on commit. Fight using lore. Deal plus one damage for the attack for each clue you have, max of plus three damage. Mythos phase, fourth doom on the agenda. Jacqueline draws. Catacombs docent. All right, three costs are three, two, two. Spawn at the nearest unrevealed location. As an action at parlay to test lore four to interpret the, the guide's ravings. If you succeed, look at the revealed side of any catacombs location and play. Group limit once per game. Aren't these catacombs absolutely fascinating? And our nearest one is going to be the one above Narrow Shaft. Mandy draws. Crypt Chill. Revelation test lore four. If you test will four. If you succeed, choose and discard an asset you control. If you can't, take two damage instead. Uh, Mandy's down one for that. That seems problematic. Um, do we just get her to even and hope for the best? Because I kind of wanted to use this Eureka to try to get Jacqueline resources again, but... Problem is, I don't want to discard any of this. So, yeah, I think we just use... I think we just, I think we use Eureka to try to protect Mandy's assets. Then the question is, do I want to put Jacqueline's ability behind this? And the answer, I think, is... Uh, no, I think we're going to need that when we go to leave. So Mandy is just going to have to test it even. Minus one says we don't get there, so we have to choose and discard an asset we control. This is unfortunate. Um, problem is, I don't want to discard any of this, I think. I think we got to lose the Dream Diary, because the Occult Lexicon right now is the only way we're able to defend ourselves. And that's if I keep the two of them together. I'll put Essence of the Dream back under Mandy's Bonded card, since I won't need it the rest of the game, most likely. But we'll exhaust the Ancestral Knowledge before we leave the Mythos phase to get Mandy's last skill from under it, so she will find. Another Momentum, which means both of her quick thinkings are in the deck. Investigation phase now, and let's move Mandy over to the map. I'll start off by exhausting Eon Chart. This isn't, this isn't a, an action yet, so this is her Eon Chart actions. I'll start with an Investigate, so she's up... Let's see, five to two, she's up three. And I'm going to actually commit... I actually am going to commit momentum to this test. So if she succeeds, we reduce the difficulty of the next test by how much we succeed by. So right now we're up... So that brings us to 7 to 2, we're up 5. That's a plus 1, so we get the last clue. A resource from Milan. And our next test is has its difficulty reduced by three, so we're going to attempt to move. But the forced here reminds us that when we would move from it, test agility three. So we're testing agility zero. Just don't pull the tentacle, Mandy. Scar 
Skull, Skull will actually work because we're, despite us being five locations away, that'll reset our skill value to zero. Zero versus zero, we win ties. So Mandy gets to move. Which means she'll spend the two clues to move up to this catacombs. She'll make friends with the catacombs docent. And then we'll reveal what's on the other side of this catacombs. So here we'll find... Mound of Bones, Shroud of One, Two Clues. Forced, when Mound of Bones is revealed, search, the, put the top four catacombs in the catacombs deck into play above, below, to the left, and to the right of Mound of Bones. At the end of the current round, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a malformed skeleton and spawn it at Mound of Bones. So we go above... And to the right, because we can't do below or to the left, since those are already occupied by locations. We'll get the two clues for that. Let's see, then... I'm going to do a little bit of metagaming here. Four cards left there. I think for actual action one, Mandy's going to parlay. Uh, use the parlay ability on the Catacombs Docent. So she's at a six to four, she's up two. Minus two will work. So I'm going to look at this catacomb's location. I don't get to reveal it yet, but we're going to see what's on the other side of it. Secret passage. Shroud of five, two clues. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and look at this. This is an action. If you control the clasp with black onyx, you place the clasp within the skull's eye socket and the passage opens. Reveal the catacomb's location to the right of secret passage. Forced, when the secret passage is revealed, put the topmost catacombs in the catacombs deck into play to the right of secret passage. So we don't get that yet. Then for action two... Mandy's going to try to evade. She's up. Actually, she's going to evade or she's just going to blast this guy. I think she's just going to blast him. So we're going to go with... I've got a plan. So we're using Lore, which is 6 to 3. She's up 3. Minus one says he's dead. And then action three, we're going to spend two clues to move over to that secret passage. Now that we know what's on the other side of that, we'll get the two clues for that. And then that goes to the right of secret passage. Jacqueline's turn, I think, is going to be very simple. She's going to move one, two... And we're going to take a... We're actually going to spend... We're actually going to, for action three, we're going to play out the Arcane Initiate. After it enters play, we can either place a Doom or two Horror on it. As a fast action, we can exhaust the Arcane Initiate to search the top three cards of our deck for a spell and draw it, shuffling our deck one and three. Um, I'm going to be triggering the advance if I put a Doom on her... But I think that's fine. So I will put a Doom on the Arcane Initiate since we're going to be advancing in another couple rounds anyway. This just makes it happen one round sooner. Then I'm going to exhaust the Arcane Initiate and I'm going to go three deeper with Mandy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. First card up. Crystal Pendulum. I can't take that because it's not a spell. Then... Power Ward, which is a spell. I've got a lot of abilities behind that. Next up. Arcane Studies. I can't take that. Internal Injury. Do not want. Shriveling. Ooh, this is tempting. And... Drawn to the Flame. Tempting, but I can't take that. So I either take Power Word or Shriveling here, and 
Let me look at what I've got on Power on Power Word. Um. Huh, this is a decision. This is this will be the first time that I've ever had a chance to use Power Word. So I think Um we're actually gonna take Power Word because I wanna try um Do I take I guess the question now is do I take Power Word because I wanna get cute or then try it out or do I take shriveling? So I have a sure way to defend myself next turn. I think as much as I want to see what Power Word can actually do, at least in our current version, I think we take Shriveling here. I think we just play it safe. So I'll be able to play Shriveling out next turn anyway. Assuming we don't get... Assuming something screwy doesn't happen. And maybe even if something screwy does happen. Alright, shriveling. We'll take a quick look at that. Will to combat on commit. Uses four charges as an action. Spend an action to fight using will instead of combat. Plus three will and plus two damage for the attack. But if you pull a bad symbol, take two horror. That's it for Jacqueline. That's it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, Mandy killed her only enemy in play, so we'll reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to three. Mandy gains one and goes to eight. Jacqueline draws. The Arcane Initiate should be unexhausted, by the way. Unspeakable Oath, Bloodthirst. Oh boy, this is the, similar to the Unspeakable Oath Curiosity Mandy has, but Jacqueline needs to deal damage in excess of an enemy's remaining health to discard it. Mandy draws. Quick Thinking, Wild Card on Commit. If you're successful by two or more on a skill test, you may immediately take an action as if it were your turn, this action does not count toward the number of actions you take each turn. Mythos phase, thanks to putting the Doom on the Arcane Initiate, we are advancing the agenda. Let's see what we get here. Oh boy. Specter of Death, a force from beyond. I'm actually going to sleeve this. Uh, no. I'm going to have to leave it like that. Three, five per investigator, three. Spawn at the starting location. Hunter, retaliate. While Specter of Death is exhausted, it takes one less damage from each attack made against it. Forced, after you fail a skill test while attempting to evade Specter of Death, it attacks you. Victory two, two and two. So it spawns at the gate to hell. That's delightful. And let's look at Agenda 2A. Empire of the Undead. All around you, the eyes of skulls glow with an otherworldly hue. A ghostly voice echoes throughout the labyrinthine catacombs. You sense a threatening presence looming around you. It is just outside of your vision, past the dim fog that permeates through the catacombs around every corner. Each location is connected to each location adjacent to it. We need 12 Doom to advance that. Now for encounter cards, Jacqueline draws. Obscuring Fog, which attaches to our location, makes that a 7 shroud. And actually there was a an end of round I forgot about where we searched the deck for a malformed skeleton. There we are. And yes, that is that end of round. Okay. We'll take a look at that. Hopefully, hopefully that won't affect anything in terms of what we need to do here. But 
We'll take a look at malformed skeleton. That's at mound of bones at the end, at end of round. Four four one. It's a hunter. Forced when it would resolve its hunter keyword. If there are no investigators within two locations of it, instead of resolving its hunter keyword, move it to the catacombs location nearest to an investigator. Forced when it attacks you, it deals either its damage or its horror, but not both. Thankfully. And it's three and three, so it'll deal either one. But it won't affect anything we did la we did coming into this phase. Mandy will then draw. The pit below. Revelation, attached to your location if there's no copy of pit below attached. If there is, discard the pit below and it gains surge instead. Attached location gets plus one shroud. So that's an eight shroud? Yeah, that sounds like we're noping out here pretty quick. At the end of the round, each investigator attached location takes three damage. Discard the pit below. Yeah, we're not staying here for that. So that turns the secret passage into an eight shroud, and we take three damage if we're still there. Um, in the investigation phase, ladies, well, Jacqueline, what say we move over to the map? I think action. I think actual action one is going to be to play shriveling. But before that, I'm going to exhaust the arcane initiate and use Mandy's ability to go three deeper for a spell. One, two, three, four, five, six. Card one. Storm of spirits. That could be tempting. Card two. Occult theory, which I can't take. Card three. Another Storm of Spirits. Card four. Drawn to the Flame, which I still can't take. The card I'm looking for, I think I cut a while ago. I was looking for Voice of Ra, but I don't think I have that in this deck anymore. Card five. Medicho della Peste, which I can't take. And... Enchanted Bow. I lose the lose the black book, and I, but I'm just going to take the storm of. I'm just going to take a storm of spirits. Then we'll take a quick look at that. Okay. Storm of Spirits is a th three cost to play, will to combat on commit. Fight using will instead of combat. You get plus two will for the attack. If you succeed instead of its standard damage, this attack deals three damage to each enemy at your location. Any additional damage to the attacked enemy. But if you pull a bad symbol, deal two damage to each investigator at your location. All right, I think for actually action one, before we do that, before we play Shriveling, is going to spend two clues to move over to this catacombs, and we'll see what we've got here. So here we'll find. Tomb of Shadows, Shroud of Four, two clues, four clues. Forced, when Tomb of Shadows is revealed, advance to Act 1B. We'll do that in a second. While the man in the pallid mask is at the Tomb of Shadows, he gets plus one per investigator health, and can't be defeated by his action ability. Victory one. We'll get the two clues for the four clues for that. I apparently can't read today. One, two, three, four. And we're advancing to Act One B. The Stranger's Shadow. Rows of skulls chatter their teeth endlessly as you pass through a narrow stone archway into a round chamber illuminated by firelight. In the center of the tomb stands the stranger, peering into the blaze. Across the wall, shadows dance and twist with the flickering of the flame. The stranger turns to face you, and his own shadow spreads across the wall. Where his shadow's arms should be, tentacles, sh tentacle shapes emerge, enveloping the walls in darkness. He lifts his hands toward the wall, as if trying to show you something. Spawn the set-aside Man in the Pallid Mask weakness in the Tomb of Shadows instead of its normal spawn location. Check the campaign log. If Ishimaru Haruko is not listed under VIP's slain, 
Search the collection for Ishimaru Haruko, just skin and bones, and spawn her at the starting location. But I am 99%, okay, I'm 100% sure that Ishimaru is among the VIPs slain. So, we'll grab the man in the pallid mask. 434, except he's a 5 since he's in the Tomb of Shadows. Normal spawn is ignored, aloof. As an action, investigate. Your location gets plus 2 shroud for this investigation. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, defeat the man in the pallid mask. Indeed, it's time. We have all laid aside a disguise but you. Robert W. Chambers, The Mask, The King in Yellow. So he's there. Oop, come on. And we'll take a look at Act 2B, or 2A in a second. The path is barred. The shadows cast along the bone walls shift into the shapes of several figures, acting out a macabre parody of the King in Yellow. Tell us how to stop the path from opening. If the man in the pallid mask is defeated, advance. Objective. What is he trying to show us? Investigators in the Tomb of Shadows may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance, and we need four. So we definitely have options on how we want to do this. That was action... I think action one was to move. We do have the four clues, so I do have the option if I want to try to defeat the man in the pallid mask. But he could be trying to show us something. I think for action two... Um... I think for action two we're going to spend three resources actually to play out Twilla. We'll work on trying to get some clues here to maybe make our lives a little easier. Three costs to play, lore, agility, and commit. We saw her in the starting hand. Sometimes, this world. I wish I never came back. And we can have two allies in play because Jacqueline does have a charisma. Her third action is going to be to exhaust Twilla to keep a charge on clairvoyance. So she's at six, nine, to what is that? Five? She's up four, and I'm going to put her special ability behind this. One, two, three. I think we got three. Yes. Token one. A cultist. Token 2, a minus 2, and a skull. I'm going to cancel the skull and the cultist, revealing the minus 2, which will give me three clues. And then we could spend the clues to advance. We, have that, we do have that option available. That will do it for Jacqueline, though. I will be right back with Mandy after we get the battery changed. Action one for Mandy. She's moving over to the Tomb of Shadows. Actually, she's going to... She's going to exhaust Eon Shard for her last charge. She'll move over to the Tomb of Shadows, and then she'll investigate. She's at... Five to... Oh, she's even? Gross. Um... I think even's where she's going to test, then. See if we can get that last clue off the location. Cultist is not good. Okay, it's a minus two, so that's a fail, and we weren't investigating either. Um, so now we're back up to full strength. We're back up to up two. As action one, I'm going to play... I'm going to spend three resources to play in the no. Uses three secrets. As an action, I can spend an action or secret to investigate. Investigating any revealed location in play as if I were at that location. I'll get three secrets for that. There we are. 
action two, we'll run the investigate back. Now that we're up two. Minus two gets her the last clue and another resource, which will bring her right back up to six. And that has to be within within two locations. Okay. And then we don't... Why do I have a feeling we're going to have to try to get out? And then for action three, Mandy will... Um... I'm going to make a little bit of a gamble here, so I'm going to spend a charge of in the know, so I'm going to speak it off in the know, and I can investigate any revealed location and play as if I were there. So I'm going to investigate the research site. I'm at even. Do I have any help that either of my investigators can give? I don't. So I'm at even. Mandy's actually up. There's actually going to commit... Mmm. I think we're just going to test it even and hope for the best. A zero actually works for us, so I'm going to grab an exhaustion token for the research site, so since I successfully investigated that, I get to reveal any location. I get to reveal any catacombs location. And I'm going to reveal this catacombs location. So this will reveal... A Sea of Skulls, Shroud of Four, Two Clues. Forced, after you end your turn at Sea of Skulls, you must either take one direct horror, or choose and discard three cards from your hand. Forced, when Sea of Skulls is revealed, Put the topmost catacombs of the catacombs deck into play above, below, or to the right of the location farthest from Sea of Skulls and mark it with a horror token. For the remainder of the game, Sea of Skulls is connected to the marked location. Um, wait a second. Put the... Put it... Okay, put the... T let me read this again. Put the topmost catacombs of the catacombs deck and to play above, below, or to the right of the location farthest from Sea of Skulls. And mark it with a horror token. Okay, so it goes... Of the location farthest from Sea of Skulls. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two... Yeah, I think it's this location. So that will go... So that catacombs will go here, and we'll mark that with a horror token. I was hoping we would have just cheesed that, but it didn't work out. What did work out, though, and you may be noticing it here as you're looking at the map, is what we've done is we have managed to make a somewhat straighter connection, so we won't have to take this loop again to try to get out, because I'm, I'm kind of metagaming a little bit, and I'm assuming that's where this is going. So I'm just... I'm kind of guessing at that, but... I'm getting ahead of myself there. That will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the malformed skeleton does have investigators within two of him. So he will move over to the secret passage on his hunter keyword. The specter of death also moves. We'll move him down to the research site. We may have to still make a little bit of a loop. Because like I said, my assumption is that we're going to have to get back out. But I'm kind of guessing at that. That will do it through the enemy phase, so we'll reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline will gain one resource and go to one. Mandy will gain one and go to seven. Jacqueline will draw. Crystal Pendulum, two cost to play, lore on commit. You get plus one will. After a skill test of your location begins, exhaust Crystal Pendulum to name a number. If this test succeeds by that number or fails by that number, draw one card. Mandy will draw. 
The Eye of Truth, four wild card on commit. If the skill test is on a treachery card and the test is successful, add that treachery to the victory display and attach the Eye of Truth to it. While attached, the Eye of Truth contributes its skill icons to all tests on copies of the attached treachery. Mythos phase before our first Doom on the second agenda. Jacqueline draws. Grasping Hands. Revelation test agility 3. For each point you fail by, take 1 damage. This seems like a great candidate for the Eye of Truth to me. That'll put us up 3. Do I have any other agility that I want to commit to this? I could... I could ward of protection this away, but... Nah, up 3 should be fine. I hope. Besides, there's probably other more dangerous stuff in the deck. Plus one puts Grasping Hands with the Eye of Truth into the victory display. Because our ladies don't have a lot of health. And then Mandy draws... Corpse Dweller, oh boy, spawn, discard a humanoid enemy at any location, and spawn Corpse Dweller at that location. If there are no humanoid enemies in play, discard Corpse Dweller and it gains Surge instead. Hunter Retaliate, 2-1. Now, one thing to note from the return is, for the duration of this scenario, the following rules apply. For the purposes of Corpse Dweller's spawn ability, the Man in the Pallid Mask does not count as a humanoid enemy. While it's Act 2, the Man in the Pallid Mask can't leave the Tomb of Shadows. And we attach that to the Scenario card. Do we have any humanoid enemies in play? We do not, so this gains Surge. Mandy draws. The Shadow Behind You. This was what Jacqueline had earlier. Unfortunately, she's probably going to have to resolve that ability. Before we leave the Mythos phase, Jacqueline is going to exhaust the Arcane Initiate to look for a spell, and I think she's going to go... Um... I think she's going to go three deep again. Four, five, six. Okay. We're going to use Mandy's ability. So first card up. Lost Soul, do not want. Card two. Class of Black Onyx, also do not want. And can't take anyway. Drawn to the Flame, can't take that. Card 4. Occult Theory, can't take that. Card 5. Ward of Protection, which we can take, and... Another, another Shriveling. Um, well, I think we're playing Shriveling this turn, even if we're getting ready to have a Skeleton land on us. So, yeah. I think... I think we're just going to take the Ward of Protection here. And I'm going to go with the plan of I'm playing Shriveling this turn. I may have to have Jacqueline take some... I'm going to have to have Jacqueline most likely take some horror to do this. But we've seen... We have another Ward of Protection in hand. Her deck's starting to get thin, but I think we are going to spend our four clues. Jacqueline's going to spend three, as one fell on the floor, and Mandy is going to spend one to advance the act. I'm Like I said, I'm assuming this is going to end up as we've got to get out of here. All right, we spent clues to advance. Recognizing that the stranger poses no immediate danger to you, you study your surroundings and the strange shadows along the wall. He takes something from the fire, and the shadows twist and distort once more, revealing a strange diagram. Mark two doubt in your campaign log. Remove the man in the pallid mask from the game. Advance to Act 3, leading the way. Alright, so we're going to mark two doubt in the campaign log. That's our first two doubt of the campaign. And then we advance to, what, 3A leading the way. So that one can go away.
All right, leading the way. The shadows along the walls of the tomb begin to coalesce. Strange runic symbols twist into the image of, the, of a building with a tall tower, its spire reaching up toward the ceiling. Then the stranger beckons for you to follow and disappears through the stone archway behind you. Ignore the forced ability on blocked passage. Objective, if each invest undefeated investigator is at blocked passage, advance. So it sounds like we need to double, I mean, so it sounds like we need to double back a bit. Also at the end of the round, the pit below should have triggered, which should be gone now. Okay, so Ward of Protection is in Jacqueline's hand now. Um, yeah, so basically it looks like we need to go back into the labyrinth further. Because we've only got two cards left, and I think one of them is that blocked path. But, right, so let's go down to Jacqueline's play area first to lead off the investigation phase. For action one, Jacqueline's going to spend her resource and exhaust the black book, taking two horror, two more horror. I believe she only has to take two to play shriveling, right? Yes. So she will play out her shriveling. I'll get the three charges. Actually, I'll get. I'm going to get three charges. Actually, no, I need four charges for it. And then action two will take us over to the map. Action two, Jacqueline's going to move back over to the secret passage, making friends with a malformed skeleton. And then action three, she's going to exhaust Twilla to keep a charge on shriveling. And she's going to put her special ability behind this. So she's at six, nine, to four, she's up five dealing three damage, and we've got her special ability behind it. One, two, three. First token up. A skull, which right now is one, two, three, four, five. So that would be enough to fail Jacqueline if we have to keep it. A plus one and a minus one. So we'll cancel the minus one and the skull, revealing the plus one. That'll do three damage to the malformed skeleton. And then we're going to do it again with shriveling. This time we're at the mercy of the first token we pull. But let's see what happens here. So once again, we're at nine to... Actually, we're at... Yeah, we're at nine to four. We're still up five. Minus two means the malformed skeleton is dead. No victory. But because we dealt, and, and because we dealt excess damage of its remaining health, Jacqueline gets to discard Unspeakable Oath Bloodthirst, thankfully. Speaking of discarding, when Mandy, dis Man Mandy investigated the research site, she got to discard Unspeakable Oath Curiosity. I did space on that. So now that we've got all that straight, let's see, play Shriveling... Wait. She, I think she took an extra action. Uh, did she take an extra action? I think she did actually take an extra action. As I was thinking... So we took the horror to play Shriveling. Yeah, I, th I think we actually took an extra action. So, Jacqueline still has Unspeakable Oath Bloodthirst in her hand. I'm going to go back and watch footage on that. I want to see where we're at. But I think we took an extra action. I'll be right back. I did end up taking an extra action. I went back and watched, I went back and watched the footage. 
So the malformed skeleton is still engaged with Jacqueline, still has three health, on, still has three damage on it. So now that we've got that figured out, we can come over to Mandy's turn. Um, let's move her over to the secret passage for action one. Action two, we're going to engage the malformed skeleton. And action three, we're going to evade it. Um, we're going to evade up two. Minus two means we evade the malformed skeleton so we don't get hit. And then at the end of Mandy's turn, since we didn't resolve the action ability on the shadow behind you, this time we're going to discard all cards in her hand, which is quick thinking. So shadow behind you is gone. Anyway, that's it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the specter of death is... The specter of death is evaded. Or is, the specter of death moves. And the malformed skeleton is evaded. So we'll reset everything. We'll bring that back to Jacqueline. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to one. Mandy gains one and goes to eight. Jacqueline draws. Enchanted Bow, level two. Three cost to play. Will, agility on commit. Uses three charges. As an action, exhausted to fight. Using either will or agility for this attack instead of will. And get plus one skill value. Deal plus one damage. As an additional cost to initiate this ability... You may spend one charge to have this attack target a non-elite enemy at a connecting location. If you do, ignore aloof and retaliate. Let me just make sure her hand size is all clear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She has to discard. We're going to discard the four of cups since that's not useful anyway. And then Mandy draws. A blood right. This could be handy. We saw this earlier. Mythos phase, second doom on the agenda. Jacqueline draws. Eyes in the walls. Okay, we saw this earlier. She is up three, and I think that's where we'll test. I'm not going to put her ability behind this because I'm going to need it for the attack on the Alphonse Skeleton. Skull is... Skull is minus X, where X is the number of locations we are away from starting. One, two, three, four, five. It maxes at five. So she's got to take either... She's got to take two horror. And we have to assign it as evenly as we can. So I think as evenly as we can is on eligible cards. One on Twilla, one on the Initiate. So we're clear there. Mandy draws. Ravenous Ghoul... Threes all across the board. Prey, lowest remaining health. The, the sight of the thing raised the question, do we eat to live or do we live to eat? One and one on attack. So that's engaged to Mandy. That will do it for the mythos phase. Before we leave the mythos phase, um... Yeah, we'll exhaust the arcane initiate to grab a spell. Ah, uh, no we won't. Because we don't really need to right now. Uh, moving into the investigation phase, though, I think we'll start with Jacqueline down. Let me just double check something. Okay, yep, we'll move, ja we'll move down to Jacqueline's play area. Let me just double I'm pretty sure I have the card I need in hand. I do. So we're going to take, so for action one, we're going to spend her one resource and take two horror 
to play out Storm of Spirits, and we're going to aim at the... We're going to aim at the Ravenous Ghoul, so we're at 6, 8, to 3, we're up 5, and I'm going to put Jacqueline's ability behind this. So let's see what we find here. One, two, three. Token one. The Elder Sign. We'll take a look at that in a second. Token two. Minus two and... A minus one. So let's take a look at Jacqueline's Elder Sign. Plus one. If this effect is canceled or ignored, draw one card. We are going to cancel the Elder Sign and the minus two. So those are gone, and then Jacqueline will draw. Dark Future. Oh, this is a problem. Because we have to put it in planar threat area. We can't ignore sim we can't cancel or ignore symbols. At the end of her turn, we reveal five random tokens from the bag. If the Elder Sign's among them, we discard Dark Future. But for now, Storm, the Malformed Skeleton and the Ravenous Ghoul are both dead. And now Jacqueline gets to discard the... Gets to discard Unspeakable Oath Bloodthirst. Now she gets rid of that. And then Action 2 will take us over to the map. Action 2, we're going to move over to Mount of Bones. And Action 3, we're going to move up to the Catacombs. So we'll see what... We'll spend Jacqueline's two clues and we'll see what's here. Here we find... Bonefilled Cavern, Shroud of Three, Four Clues. While you're investigating Bonefilled Cavern, you have one fewer hand slot. Forced, when it's revealed, put the top two catacombs in the catacombs deck into play and to the right of the Bonefilled Cavern, Victory One. Look at the four clues for that. And then the last two catacombs go... Nope, we can't go below, so we have to go to the right. Right, and then that was... Right, Storm of Spirits, move, move. Okay, so we got that figured out. End of Jacqueline's turn, though. We do have to reveal five random tokens from the bag. If the Elder Sign's among them, we get rid of Dark Sheep. Right, I think that's... One, two, three, four... Five. Let's see what we've got here. We have... Ooh. The Elder Sign is among them, so we get rid of Jacqueline's Dark Future. That's a relief. As, we lean, as, you, as you've seen in this campaign, we, rely, we lean heavily on that ability. That's it for Jacqueline. Mandy will move... One to the Mount of Bones. Two to the Bonefilled Cavern. And then three, um, actually, no, I don't want to split them up just yet. I think I will investigate, though. We're only up two because of the Will of the High Priestess. Plus one gets her a clue and a resource from Milan. So a very good engine for us all game. That's all three of Mandy's actions. That will do it for Mandy. That'll do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the Spectre of Death moves over to Sea of Skulls. And then he's the only enemy in place. So we'll reset everything. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline will gain a resource and go to 1. Mandy will gain 1 and go to 10. Jacqueline will draw. 
Storm of Spirits, which we used to great effect last turn. Mandy will draw. Quick thinking, we had to discard that earlier to a treachery card. Mythos phase, third doom on the agenda. Jacqueline will draw. Corpse Dweller, I don't think we have any humanoid enemies in play again. Nope. So we discard that and it gains Surge, which means Jacqueline will Surge into. Poltergeist, this we can play. 3, 2, 4. Can't be damaged except by spell, relic, or encounter cards. Parley, test lore 3 to attempt to banish the Geist. If you succeed, deal it 1 damage. Mandy draws. The Shadow Behind You again. All right, that's not that could that could have been a lot worse. I can tell. I'll tell you that for sure. Moving into the investigation phase, um, let me think how I want to do this. Um, that is a spell, so I could just take it out right now. That might be tempting, especially since I want to try to since I want to see if I can get the last of the catacombs locations into play. Or, for all I know, maybe the blocked passage is already out. So let's actually move down to Jacqueline's play area, and we'll start by trying to deal with this poltergeist. For action one, Jacqueline will exhaust Twilla to keep a charge on shriveling, and we're up... Six, nine, three, we're up six. I think I'm going to put her special ability behind it, though, because if we take two horror from this, Jacqueline is just going to be defeated by sanity in this scenario. So, actually, no. I can spread this horror around as I need to. So we're up six. So actually, with that in mind, I'm not going to put Jacqueline's ability behind it. I can spread the horror around. A plus one means we don't have to worry about that anyway. The poltergeist is defeated. So that's action one. Action two, I'm going to take a charge off clairvoyance, and this I'm going to put Jacqueline's ability behind. Because I think we need the clues way more than we... Well, we needed the poltergeist dead, but we need the clues as well to try to get out of this scenario because we only have a few locations left to open. So, we're up six, trying to go for three clues, and I got that one's ability behind me. One, two, three. There we are. Token one. There's a plus one. I need to cancel that if I can. Token two. There's a minus two. That won't fail me. And a plus one. So I do need to cancel both of the plus ones because if I reveal a plus one during the test, I take two horror. So I do get all three clues, though. Two of which I'm immediately going to spend to move over to the map for action three. Jacqueline's Action 3 is going to be moving over to this Catacombs location, so here we'll find... Crypt of the Sepulchral, Sepulchral Lamp. Shroud of two, four clues. Crypt of the Sepulchral, Sepulchral Lamp is investigated using Will instead of the skill indicated by the investigation attempt. When it's revealed, put the top two Catacombs in the Catacombs deck into play above and to the right of Crypt of the Sepulchral Lamp. We get the four clues for that. And we'll put that to the right. That will do it for Jacqueline. Mandy will then move one in. She'll spend her two clues to move over to this catacombs, and here we'll find. The stone archways, which means the blocked path is back out somewhere. That's great. Ignore the text on unrevealed locations adjacent to stone archways. Forced, when it's revealed, put the topmost catacombs in the catacombs deck 
and to play to the right of stone archways. Oh, this is great. So action, that was action one. Action two. Oh, this is bad. We're going to move back to the crypt with Jacqueline, and then action three, we're going to resolve the action on the shadow behind you to look behind us. Mostly because I need to protect blood right in our hand. That will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, the specter of death moves to the mound of bones. We need to turn on the jets here at this point. But, but I'm getting ahead of myself there. I'll flip everything over. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to two. Mandy gains one and goes to 11. Jacqueline draws. Clasp of Black Onyx. One cost to play. It's a gift unlooked for. While it's in, the, in your hand, increase the cost of each other card in your hand by one. Uh, let me check her hand size. I think we're clear, but I'd rather make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are clear on that. Twill is unexhausted. Mandy draws. Your worst nightmare. Oh, fantastic. Two, three, two. Hunter, prey bearer only. The bearer of it can't attack, damage, or defeat it. Okay, that's problematic. Mythos phase, fourth doom on the agenda. Jacqueline draws. Corpse dweller, we've seen this earlier, so it surges for Jacqueline into... The pit below, we need to get out of here. That's a shroud of three. Mandy draws. Eyes in the walls. Test will three. Uh, she's at three. She's even. She will commit quick thinking to go up one and hope for a pull. Because evading the, your worst nightmare is an option as well. Minus one means we pass, but we don't get the action. <sighs> right. So that brings us into the investigation phase, and... <sighs> I think now... We need to start off in... <sighs> Do we try to get... I think I want to get Jacqueline moving. I think I want to get Jacqueline those clues so we can start working on making some connections here. Let's move down, let's move over to the map. I'm trying to decide what Jacqueline wants to do. I've got a few different paths I could go. I could ignore your worst nightmare and gamble that this is the location we need. The problem is if it's not, we're out somewhere in the middle of nowhere and we've got the specter of death hunting us again. <sighs> what to do, what to do. And we've got the class of black onyx in our hand. That's going to make dealing with that even harder. So, if I gamble in the blocked path that we need to get to is right here... Then we just end the scenario on the, then we just end the scenario basically right here. I think that's a gamble worth taking, honestly. So for action one, I'm going to exhaust Twilla to keep a charge on clairvoyance. And I'm going to put Jacqueline's ability behind it. So I'm up six, nine. I'm up five. I'm actually up six trying to get three clues. Because of the pit below. We do not want to still be here when that goes up. One, two, three. Okay. Token one. 
a plus one, which I'll have to cancel so I don't take two horror. I can take it, but I'd rather not if I don't have to. Token two. A zero, which will also most likely need to get canceled. And a minus two. So I'll cancel the zero and the plus one. Reveal a minus two and get three clues off the location. Then action two, I'm going to move over to the Bonefield Cavern. And action three, Jacqueline's going to spend two of her clues to move into this catacomb. So let's see what we find here. We find... Well of Souls, Shroud of Four, Two Clues. At, after you end your turn at Well of Souls, you must either take one direct horror or discard two random cards from your hand. Forced, when it's revealed, put the topmost catacombs in the catacombs deck into play above, below, or to the right of Well of Souls, and it's victory one. So Jacqueline will have to take a direct horror, unfortunately, which leaves her one from Defeated by Sanity. That will do it for Jacqueline's turn, though. Mandy, we need to evade this. Your, we need to evade your worst nightmare. She can't damage it, unfortunately. So she's going to be evading up one. We'll probably have to have Milan eat an attack if we can't get away from it. touched. Not a great time for that, Mandy. Action two. We have to evade it. A zero gets us away from it. And then action three. Three, Jacqueline's probably going to have to come back and help Mandy on her next turn. <sighs> yeah, I think action three, we have to move Mandy to the Bonefield Cavern. I don't want her to be there when the pit below goes off. So that will do it for Mandy. That will do it for the... Actually, at the end of her turn, before we do that... She is going to discard, she is going to have to discard Blood Right, which is really bad for us right now. But that gets rid of the shadow behind you. So that's it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, she'll move up and make friends with the Spectre of Death. It's not the, okay. Mandy will take one damage and put the rest of it on Milan. So Milan eats, Milan eats it, basically. So that's it for the, the enemy phase. Your worst nightmare will ready. And then everything else will ready as well. And I'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to three. Mandy gains one and goes to twelve. Jacqueline draws. Occult Theory. While it's in your hand or committed to a skill test, it gains will icons equal to your lore, which is four, and lore equal to your will, which is six. Mandy draws. Pathfinder. This would have been useful very early in the scenario. Not so much now. During your turn, if you're not engaged with any enemies, exhaust Pathfinder to move to a connecting location. Mythos Phase. Fifth Doom on the location. Jacqueline draws. A poltergeist. Delightful. Mandy draws. Catacombs docent. Spawning at the nearest unrevealed location, which for us is the one location marked with a horror that's connected to Sea of Skulls. So that will do it for the mythos phase. Investigation phase now, and our job suddenly just got a lot more... Hmm. Yeah, it got a little more difficult, but probably not terrible. 
Um, let's start with Jacqueline in her play area. The pit below went off, so I discarded that as well. Action one, we're going to exhaust Twilla to keep a charge on Shriveling. And I'm going to put her ability behind this. I have to be very careful with using this at this point, with taking horror now. So Jacqueline right now is up 6-9. She's up 6, pulling 3 tokens. One, two, three. All right. First token for Jacqueline. Minus two. Second. The Elder Sign, which we'll probably cancel if we can. And... A zero. So we'll cancel the minus two and the Elder Sign. The Poltergeist is defeated. And Jacqueline draws a card. She draws... The Chthonian Stone, two cost to play, will and Loron commit. Seal one of the bad symbols except the tentacle. Uses three charges. If it has no charges, return it to your hand. Forced, after you reveal a tentacle symbol during a skill test, remove one charge from the Chthonian Stone and it takes up a hand slot. That was action one. Action two... I think will be to pop her last charge of clairvoyance and investigate. So she's at 9 to 4. She's up 5, trying to discover both of those clues. A 0 gets her the clues, but she does have to take 2 horror. Which I'll put on... I'll put both of those on the Arcane Initiate. So the Arcane Initiate goes bye-bye. And then Action 3 will take us over to the map. Action 3 will move Jacqueline over to the Candlelit Tunnels. I do have an action there I can test, but not right now. That's it for Jacqueline. Unfortunately, there's a very compelling argument right now to leave Mandy behind. So, But I'm going to try not to. Unfortunately, Action 1 is to evade the... Wait, he's at Hunter and Retaliate. Oh, Retaliate is fail if... Wait, so it's got double? Oh! If you fail a skill test while attempting to evade Spectre of Death, it attacks you. Great. So, we're going to commit Pathfinder to go up one. So it's basically got... So it's basically got Alert. Alert and Retaliate. Before those became a key... Before Alert became a keyword. Great, so we're up one. The Elder Sign will actually, should actually get us away from it. We saw the Andy's Elder Sign earlier, so I'm going to go... I'm going to take two targets because I don't want to find a weakness right now. So... We have the opportunity to draw these cards as well. So, card one. Pantalone, which could replenish her hand, but probably not. Card two. Strange Solution Acidic Icor, which we might use. And... Hiking Boots. I think we will take the... I think we'll take the Hiking Boots and the Pantalone... No... I think we're going to take the Strange Solution, Acidic Eye Core, and the Hiking Boots. And we can't... Well, we could commit the Hiking Boots, but I'm not going to. We'll take a look at Hiking... We'll take a look at both those cards when we actually play them. But the Specter of Death is evaded, and action two, action three for Mandy. 
Very simple turn there. That will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, your worst nightmare moves to the bone-filled cavern. Then everything will ready up. And then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. Jacqueline gains one resource and goes to four. Mandy gains one and goes to 13. Jacqueline draws. Drawn to the flame, zero cost to play. Well, one cost to play because we've got the clasp in hand. Will Lauren commit? Draw the top card of the encounter deck, then discover two clues at your location. Mandy draws. Survey the area. We had a chance on this earlier when we passed on it. It's basically a cult theory. While it's in your hand or committed to a test, it gains lore equal to your agility and agility equal to your lore. Mythos phase, sixth doom on the agenda. Jacqueline draws. Ghoul minion, fun, fun. Actually, let me check here. I think we're over hand size for Jacqueline. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yikes. Okay, so we've got to discard three cards. Crystal Pendulum, Enchanted Bow, and uh, the Chthonian Stone can go. And then Mandy will draw. Crypt Chill, Revelation Test Lore 4. If you fail, choose an, or will for, I should say. We saw this earlier, but I didn't go through the flavor text on it. The supernatural cold threatens to freeze your soul. So it does. All right, Mandy's down one, and I think that's where she'll test. Plus one means she's all clear. That will do it for the Mythos phase. Investigation phase now, and the first order of business looks to be clearing this ghoul minion out of the way. Clearing the ghoul minion brings us down, of course, to Jacqueline's play area. Action one, she'll exhaust Twilla to keep a charge on Shriveling, and put her special ability behind this, so she's up seven. It's way overkill, but I'm more concerned about the horror clause on shriveling. One, two, three. First token up. A minus two. Second up. A plus one, and minus two. So we'll cancel both minus twos and obliterate the ghoul minion. Then action two will take us over to the map. Action two is very much going to be a gamble because I'm going to be moving to the catacombs up here, which will make friends with the catacombs docent. Unfortunately, he only does horror, so I'm going to have to kill him most likely if this isn't where we need to be. I'll spend the two clues for the move. Because we, well, I might have to kill him anyway, but let's find out what we've got here. So, on the back of this we find... The Block Passage. This is exactly where we need to be. Shroud of Seven. Forced, when you reveal Blocked Passage, take two damage, but you can't leave it this round. A stack of human remains blocks the candlelit corridor. This gives new meaning to the phrase, dead end. But that is where we need to be to finish the... Ignore the forced ability. Okay, so we do ignore that. Then action three... Um, I think we'll just try to evade him, because why not? This is where we need to be anyway, so the scenario is about to be over. So we're even. And he doesn't have any special keyword.
Minus two says we don't evade him, but that's not important right now. For action one, Mandy will move into the Black Passage as well. And then since each undefeated investigator is at the Black Passage, we advance. The Secret Exit. Following the stranger's lead, you take a circuitous route through the underground passageways. No kidding. Finally, you are confronted by a dead end. A tunnel blocked by an impossibly thick wall of collapsed bone and rubble. The stranger stands nearby, holding the partially charged skull he pulled from the fire in the Tomb of Shadows. What now? you ask, confused. He holds the skull aloft, and the floor begins to collapse into a pit of dark emptiness below. Bones and rubble from the wall fall into the pit, and it grows larger with each moment. The stranger bows, then fall backward, falls backward into the pit before you can grab him. Wait, you call out, but it is too late. With the pit growing and threatening to swallow the catacombs entirely, you have no choice but to follow him. R2. With that, let's move back up top for R2. We're all set, so let's get into Resolution 2. Resolution 2. You fall ceaselessly through the empty abyss. No air slows your descent or courses through your hair. It is a passageway devoid of reality. Finally, you pass through an invisible gateway and enter another realm. Looming above and below you are two skylines, one a warped reflection of the other. A vortex of swirling black clouds and crashing waves lies in between them. You study both sides. Familiar city and its strange mirror. Could this be the path to Carcosa? A passageway between realities. Where realms converge? If so, all that is left is to find where this gate appears on Earth. You fall into the vortex below. You are shaken awake by a police officer and lifted to your feet. You feel as though the weight of a train has slammed into your head. The pain is unbearable. The man shines a flashlight in your eyes and asks you several questions in French. Your eyes widen with realization and you rest your arm free from the conf confused man's grip. I have to go at once. In your campaign log, record that you know the site of the gate. Record two tally marks under Chasing the Stranger. Remove all cultist, rune, and elder thing tokens from the chaos bag. Then, add two rune tokens to the chaos bag. If Ishimaru Haruko, just skin and bones, is in the victory display, record her name in your campaign log under VIPs slain. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. If you're hearing any background noise related to chaos tokens, I was dealing with the changes to the chaos bag, so now we've got two runes in the bag instead of two cultists. But we did pick up five experience from the scenario, which we'll be spending later this afternoon during upgrades. But that will do it for this playthrough of the Return to the Pallid Mask. As I mentioned, later, probably this afternoon, we're going to spend the experience that, from this scenario. Then Wednesday we're debuting the new Terra Mystica-esque game, as we play Age of Innovation from Fuhrerland Spiel. As for next week, the fall campaign continues with the seventh scenario, Return to Black Star's Rise. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.